if you could tell the switch of uh, videos there, I'm playing dad at the moment too. So if you see a four-year-old come in the middle of this, it happens. But first I did want to show, and this maybe shouldn't count towards my time, but here's my relic. It's a Detroit Tigers baseball that I got in 1996 when I went to old Tiger Stadium. So that's kind of a relic for me, some little history. But what I want to talk to you today is about a young farm boy in Missouri in 1923. He had an animation company out there that failed. And like every good entrepreneur, what do you do when you fail? You move to Hollywood. So he moved to Hollywood. And when he got there, he created a cartoon with a couple of animators called Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. And it was actually a really, really successful cartoon. The problem was, is after that came out, all the animators left his team and got hired away by the bigger companies. Again, another failure on his part. But that didn't stop him. He decided to draw another cartoon. This one is of a mouse. And in this mouse, he created a cartoon called Steamboat Willie. And in that cartoon, it was innovative because it was the first cartoon to bring together sound and cartoon all in one. And this was about 1928, 1930 time frame. So that was innovative at the time, new and different. And as you probably already know, I'm talking about Mickey Mouse and I'm talking about Walt Disney. He created a company on innovation and a company that didn't fear failure. That was the groundwork that he started with Walt Disney. Now, on top of that, he went on to create another movie. But before that, actually, I want to ask a quick question. Who out there knows the number one grossing movie ever for Walt Disney? Please just spit it out there. Go ahead, Stacy. Yeah. May I say, I think it's Snow White. Cinderella. Sleeping Beauty. All right. So I will say that, uh, Kyle, I think you said Snow White. That is correct. Snow White is the number one grossing movie for Disney for all time. It's made over $3 billion. And that was the first movie that Walt Disney produced in 1937. He produced it, and what was unique about this is the first full-length feature cartoon in color. But it also started a franchise model for Walt Disney, because what he realized with the release of this movie is he could release it, make money, re-release it, make more money. And then on top of that, he could sell toys at Walmart uh, uh. and uh, Kmart, which added more revenue to the company. So it, innovative that he created that. Next, he moved on to another thing that most people thought was going to be a failure because of the millions of dollars he put into it. It was this small park he wanted to do in Anaheim, California. <laughs> uh, orange groves out there or something like that you may have heard of it before it's called disneyland and today we know it to be a success but at the time everybody thought it was going to be a failure and they thought he was crazy for his thought process on it and honestly on the first day of opening it was kind of a failure because literally the night before they laid the asphalt down and the next day ended up becoming the hottest day in california that year <laughs> and the asphalt just started melting when people were walking on it. However, that didn't stop people. Disneyland became one of the most successful theme parks and also started a, another part to that franchise for Walt Disney because not only could his movies be released in the theaters, re-released, sold, toys sold in stores, but now he could take that movie and put it into his park, which is further revenue to generate. So you had this franchise model of almost three different things, release the movie, toys, and then the park. And that park also allowed him global expansion because if you look at today, they have parks in Hong Kong, they got one in Shanghai, they have one in Paris, they got one in Orlando. So they're all over the place. So Disney has global reach. Now, when I was looking through this topic, what I found really, really interesting was not just the history of Walt Disney, but some of the current history. Looking to the point when Bob Iger, their most recent CEO, took over in 2005. See, through the late 90s and early 2000s, Disney had a problem. 
they went away from that innovation and fear of failure. They looked at the bottom line and quarterly and making money and it wasn't working out for them and they didn't know why. They just weren't making the money that they should be making. I mean, it's Disneyland, it's the mouse. You should be making tons of money. But when Bob Iger took over, he brought the company back to innovation and brought the company back to without a fear of failure. And how he did that was some of the acquisitions that he did. The first acquisition he purchased was Pixar Studios from Steve Jobs. That Pixar Studios acquisition brought in innovation right back and influx it right into the company because he put the Pixar, and if you don't know, Pixar was uh, famous for Toy Story. Um, but when he brought back Pixar and put them put him in charge of the animators at Disney and end up influxing new new thought processes and they've created great movies like Toy Story 2, Cars, and then also a Brit a, a, a big movie you may have heard of, Frozen. I don't know. It's it's made like 407 million dollars. My daughter's got it all over the place in the house. But all that built onto that franchise model. Not only could you develop the movie, but you could bring this like movies like cars into the parks and sell the toys. So it just continued that model that Walt Disney created. So and, and there were some other big acquisitions that Bob Iyer did. He did Marvel he, and Star Wars, which is huge for Disney. So quickly, the stock went from grew over 300% in a matter of five years with Bob Iger. So to, uh, probably in March timeframe, the stock was sitting about $160 when originally he took over and it was about $50. Now, it's great to talk about the great things, but let's talk about the uh, elephant in the room. Disney's got some problems recently. I mean, all their parks are shut down because of COVID-19. So that, that's a huge, huge blast to them. Their stock price, like I said, was at 160. Now it's at 100. So that turns to be a problem. Everyone's like, hey, what's Disney gonna do? Disney's probably gonna fail again, I don't know. I would argue that Disney is gonna be a leader in this environment that we're in right now. Mm -hmm. Why? Think about it. Walt Disney started the company in 1928, the depression. He started it from the beginning there when other people were afraid to start mm -hmm. business. It survived World War II. It survived our last great recession. And we look to Disney for innovation and new ways of doing things. I feel that Disney is going to be a, a leader in this new environment, showing us how to, you know, navigate these waters that we have in front of us. So let's see how it goes. Thanks, guys.